Dunphy, who his actual name is Daniel Hooper, joins us now alongside someone who used to be with Extinction Rebellion, Rupert Reid. So welcome to you both. Swampy, when you saw the protest yesterday, what did you think? Brilliant, go on you, this is really important publicity or not the right way to proceed? I thought that it was um, incredibly brave people who care about the environment. Right. Um, so but... continuing your noble tradition of being ultra disruptive so that they get talked about? Um, I don't think, you know, you, there's different types of direct action, isn't there? And um, the type of direct action that I would do would be to uh, hold companies accountable um, that are causing uh, environmental damage. Um, do you think that by throwing a jigsaw on court 18 and getting a Wimbledon player to clear it up is holding companies accountable? That, that particular action isn't holding companies accountable, but it's got people talking about it. I'm not saying that, you know, I, I wouldn't do it that way. That's, that's mm. what I'm saying. You're I'm not, not saying, saying you wouldn't do it that way, or you are saying you wouldn't do it that way? Well, at, at the moment, I, I wouldn't do it that way, mm. but I think the people that are are really dedicated people. What the, the thing that struck me, because when I was in local radio, I covered the, the sort of disruption that you caused, and what I would say is that you actually had a direct effect on, you know, people trying to build things which you thought were environmentally damaging. The well, we... sort of obstruction that you caused did, you know, actually physically stop people doing things. Whereas I'm not sure that if you're a climate campaigner, do, doing a Just Stop Oil protest at Wimbledon does have any direct effect on oil and gas drilling, for instance. Um... Well, we just had the hottest July yes. in oh, history, haven't we? I don't you think know, any so, of us are in dispute about the problem. Yeah, the problem is there. So, totally you know, agree. And uh, totally we're talking agree. about it today. Yes. And, and we would be talking about it on the basis that we've just had the mm. record hot day. Mm. Yes. So, yeah. where, But where is the accountability in well, exactly. the Just Stop this Oil why, protest? This, you know, this is where we, we need to also have a talk about you know, how are we going to tackle yeah. the problem? Bringing the majority of people together... Right. Um, ..who, you know, the majority of people want to stop climate change. There we go. So, Rupert Reid, you used to be with Extinction Rebellion. Why did you leave? Well, it became clear to me and a number of other people in XR that Extinction Rebellion had achieved something splendid, raising climate consciousness, but that if we were going to actually win, we actually needed to bring the majority with us, the silent majority, the moderate majority. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Climate Majority Project is all about. That's why Swampy is joined with us and Lord Deben and Lord Randall from the Conservatives and a whole host of diverse people to say, isn't it time that rather than bickering with each other, we got together and faced the common enemy, which is, as has just been mentioned, is a huge and dire threat to all of us and to all of our children. So what we're seeking to do in the Climate Majority Project is mobilise this coalition of unusual suspects and say, let's actually set aside our differences and start to work on the root cause of the problem in the chronic absence of sufficient government leadership. So we're asking people to get busy getting resilient in their local communities, growing food together where they live. People in professions like the law, like insurance, to act together mm. to get their companies... Oh, we've got a to... musical soundtrack. So sorry. Somebody's I trying to come in. Kate Garraway's protest. Oh, my God, it's going again. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, that person obviously wants to get in on the conversation. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah. They're yeah. very it's, key. Yeah. It's, about, as well. it's about people coming together and working where they've got power, along with other people. So, we all know it's not enough just to, to recycle and to be green no. consumers. So, so, when you look back, yeah. you, we've reported on a number of Extinction Rebellion mm. uh, protests that were made and you were a spokesperson for them. The gluing, you know, your, your supporters gluing themselves to, to trains, to the underground, one of the most environmentally friendly forms of transport in Canning Town, and, and then the, the issues that come from mm. there. Do you think you got that wrong? Do you think there were many of those protests that, that weren't actually effective in forwarding 
the discussion and actually just created a lot of anger and frustration. I think that sometimes protesters have got it wrong. You mentioned Canning Town. Canning Town. That was a striking instance. I think that's where some of us started to think there needs to be a much broader coalition that brings people together to do the positive stuff mm. that needs doing. And that's what's actually going to be effective. That's what's going to, in the long run, we think, change people's minds. When enough people in the law, in insurance, in teaching, in their churches, where they live, get together and start to create the change yeah. on the ground that is not being done right now by our yeah. government. Have you been able to speak to the organisers of Just Stop Oil? Because having come from Extinction Rebellion and, and having a sort of a history of this, and to, to discuss what you've learnt from the protest that you were a part of and understanding where you want your new group to go and say, look, can we coordinate this together so actually you stop upsetting everybody and driving people in the opposite way from supporting your mm. cause and we bring them with us. Can so I come back on yeah, that? Yeah, of course. Because, um, I don't think uh, people who care about climate change, which is, as we say, you know, the majority of people are going to be put off doing anything about climate change because they don't agree with individual actions. How do you measure that? Well, would you? Would you? Would, you know, you, you, you. We're looking at the well, destruction no, but you're of the coming, planet. But in your head, you're coming from a position of there's a climate emergency. Yeah. We need to act. But the, in other people's heads, particularly those people who have waited hours to uh, go and watch a match in Wimbledon, or people watching those protests, they might think, you know what? I just have stopped listening. Well, I'm you, not you, saying that's the right thing to do. Do you think that will they make them go out that. and get a four by four and drive more? I don't think so. Well, it I, might I think... not stop them doing that, seeing that. It might make them less stopped. engaged with the whole debate. I, I can't see it. I think you'd have to be pretty daft to say, let's, you know, yeah. let's but destroy the our is, children's but Rupert, futures just because I, No, of course. I know, Rupert, but the thing is, how do you measure it? How do you measure the impact that your mm. protests? Are, that these protests and your um, well, tactics only... are having. <clears throat> yeah. For instance, one measurement might be, when you look at what the government's doing, has the government changed anything? One of the things it's changed is protest law. Yeah, you're it's made it harder right. to protest. Yeah. So or, the question... on the other hand, yeah. Sir Keir Starmer said he's going to stop new oil and gas drilling, but he's going to allow those licences which have already yeah. been approved to go ahead. So what my question is, is how do you measure how effective those tactics are? It's a great question. And the answer will only really be available in 30 years' time. And how are people going to look back in 30 years' time on where we're at now? The crucial question that everyone has to answer is what are you going to say to your children when they ask you when you knew what did you do? So what we're saying to everyone is please, if you're part of the moderate majority, mm -hmm. go to climatemajority.com, get involved and start taking okay. action on the ground so that you can answer the, um, your children when they ask you that. We've um, just had a line from the policing minister, Chris Philp, who said that the government strongly encourages sporting organisations to take out legal injunctions against protesters. He said that would mean more severe criminal penalties for people who broach them. I mean, uh, uh, I, OK, so uh, on, on the subject of protest law, I mean, protest is, has been a part of uh, the changes, the most important changes that have happened, be it uh, women getting the vote, mm -hmm. um, stopping or making it not OK to be racist and mm -hmm. homophobic, mm -hmm. um, you know, so many things, you know, uh, the minimum wage, you know, these are all, you know, helped along by protest. Mm -hmm. And the government's new Wants laws to crack down. Well, it's, are, it's are, one are, of the effects, isn't it, of these protests? Rupert, what did you make this week of Rishi Sunak saying that everybody should do a Johnny Bairstow if they're faced with a Just Stop Oil protester? Just heroically handle them off the pitch. I think what everyone should do is what they can do to face up to the threat of our mm. time. The thing which is going to define our time, the, the question mm. which our children will have for us when yeah. they look back on their lives Do you with think us. that protesters face being manhandled because of the uh, insistence on these tactics? But look, what we need to do, Susanna, is get beyond the debate about tactics to tackling the core of the problem. That's why we think what we've got in the Climate Majority Project is really positive, because it's all about what you mm. can positively well, you do need to coordinate along with other people. Because, of course, it's those tactics that we saw yesterday, which is why we're talking about it again yeah. today, isn't it? It's no, their so it tactics is, that's creating It is the having an effect, but, isn't it? Well, but you could also choose to, to focus less on the tactics and more on the, on the root causes of the problem, right? Let's talk more about the hottest day in history which, yeah. well, two we days been, ago. We yeah? are. Let's, I mean, Laura's uh, been talking about it all 
and, and law is absolutely great. And, and what we need is for the whole of the media to start to swing to focus on this. Like in the Second World War, for example, we didn't spend all our time talking about the tactics of conscientious objectors. Right? We spent most of our talk time talking about how are we going to deal with this common enemy. And the common enemy that we face now, the whole of humanity faces, is so awesome. That's what we need to have a laser-like okay. focus Rupert on. And Swampy Daniel, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.